Hey everybody, Clyde here, and this is my hot take video on Alvaro de Bazan. When Wargaming first announced the Bazan, I was extremely excited about this new destroyer. Many of you guys know that I am a huge fan of run and gun gunboat destroyers, and I was hoping that this, the first Spanish destroyer in the game, which was equipped with a burst fire mechanic, could be a really interesting addition to the other ships that we have that are kind of similar. Wargaming gave me a Bazan to try out, and in today's video, we are gonna go over the ship's general feel and her salient characteristics. Along the way, I'll give you my take on how she compares to the other ships that are kind of like her that have already released in World of Warships. As this is a hot takes video, I will be popping up the hot takes scorecard right over there on the screen, and you'll be able to see the categories that we're gonna use to compare this ship against others that are similar to her and even just other ships across World of Warships. Now these videos are somewhat data-driven and somewhat opinion-driven, and I'll try to be very clear about whether I'm giving you an opinion or a fact about the ship as we go throughout today's video. In my last hot take video, the one about the HMS Hampshire, much like the dwarves of Casa Dune, I dug a little too greedily and a little too deep. You know what they awoke in the darkness of Casa Dune. These hot take comparison videos are supposed to be quick for you guys to watch and easy for me to produce. Now, last time with Hampshire, I, I leaned way too hard into the data. Now, I love leaning into the data, and you guys love it when I lean into the data, but I simply can't afford to go quite so hard for every single ship I wanna make one of these videos for. This time, I'm gonna try to dial it back just a little bit while still giving you guys a sound, rational, and reasoned description of the Bazan and her capabilities, and but also like not killing an entire weekend for me. Let me know in the comments if you guys think I did a good job when you're done watching the video. I'd really appreciate some feedback. First, let's talk about comparables, and I'm talking about comparable ships. Now, there is a lot of variability in the list of tier 10 destroyers, so I decided to select a few destroyers that were at least in the same neighborhood as Bazan for this comparison. I ended up going with a set of eight gun tier 10 destroyers that have torpedoes. This list includes Attilio Regolo, Kleber, Marceau, and Khabarovsk, or Kaba. Now, technically, Summers has eight guns and torpedoes as well, but she's really not like the others in this list. One of these things is not like the others. There will be a few times during today's video where we do compare Bazan against all of the tier 10 destroyers, but I did want to have that group of kind of peer destroyers that were similar in flavor, um, and that'll be kind of where we start with most of our comparisons as we go through the video. First, let's talk about Bazan's guns. The ship's guns are not special, if I'm being honest. Among her comparable ships, she has the worst AP DPM and the second worst HE DPM. For both HE and AP, she's towards the bottom of the list in terms of flight time. In other words, how long it takes the shells to get from the end of her barrels to the target. But she does have competitive dispersion against her contemporaries, and I found it pretty easy for me to hit battleships and cruisers, even when I was pressing the gun range beyond 15 kilometers. Although the AP shells can work when given a good shot, a nice flat broadside or something, I spent most of my time in Bazan riding the HE. The HE has 23 millimeters of penetration, which is pretty common in her group of comparables, but I did find myself shattering a lot of shells. I decided against going with IFHE in, in my build here, which I'll show you later on in the video, um, but she does have a decent fire chance of 9%, which is as good or better than Marceau, Kaba, and Regolo. Honestly, I wanted just a little bit more out of the guns on Bazan, and I suppose you're supposed to get that little bit more from the burst fire mode, so let's talk about that. When I first got Bazan, I thought that I was going to use the burst fire mode for farming battleships and cruisers and stuff, but it turns out that doing so is a mistake because it actually reduces your DPM by quite a bit. Check this out right here. As you can see, the long reloading slash waiting time for the same three salvos is 11.6 seconds worse when you're using burst fire. When farming a low rate of fire, easy to hit ship like a battleship or a big cruiser like an Alaska, just keep your guns in regular mode. And when you need to knock out a destroyer fast, you can switch to burst fire mode and blap them, then hit your smoke and curl away safely. The reason this works is that when you switch to burst fire mode, you don't have to pay the extra long reload until after you've gained the benefit of the burst fire shots. Take a look at this. What this means is that you can do a normal salvo, then hit the F button to swap the burst fire mode, and then really unload on a target for a total of four salvos in an extremely short 8.3 second period. I found this technique to be very effective at killing destroyers that were spotting me, or at least dishing up so much damage to them that they got scared and popped their own smoke. Once they were sunk or scared, I could easily go dark and escape danger. Now, sometimes I was able to use their smoke because they popped it, if they still lived, or I could use my own if necessary. 
Once I was no longer detected, that 27 second burst reload was basically painless because nobody could see me and I could reposition and get ready for my next attack or start farming a nearby battleship or cruiser if one was available. Without that burst fire making Bazan's guns more interesting, they're probably like a two or a three. Uh, but because there are some interesting things you can do with burst fire mode, I'm gonna go ahead and rate them as a four in this hot take. I know this isn't a mechanic that everyone's excited about, and I get that, I respect that, I understand it. Conde was such a terror in clan battles last season. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but as always, let's keep it civil and make this a discussion, not an argument. Next, let's talk about the ship's torpedoes. Bazan's torpedoes are pretty humdrum, honestly. They're basically identical to those on Regolo. Slow, kind of mediocre damage, but very long range at 13.5 kilometers. They reload in just over a minute and a half, which is reasonably quick, I suppose, for a ship of this tier. So whenever they're loaded, you should be looking for a place to launch them and you may get a hit or two each battle. You'll use them more than you use Kaba's Torps because Kaba's are only six kilometers in range, but at the end of the day, you're gonna do most of your damage with Bazan using the guns. I've rated the torpedoes for Bazan a three because they are reasonably useful, but they're certainly not special in any way at all. In my build, Bazan's detection range is 6.2 kilometers by sea and 3.5 kilometers by air. That happens to be the same range as her AA gun, so I guess you could just leave those on if you wanted. Uh, 6.2 kilometers isn't a low enough detectability range that you could take caps completely unnoticed. You will face destroyers with far better concealment ranges uh, than you, but it does let you react before something like a Kaba, a Kleber, or most cruisers uh, all cruisers could open up their guns on you. Uh, for hit points, Bazan comes in third place out of all 22 tier 10 destroyers, and in my build, she's got just over 30,000 hit points at 30,100. There's no hull repair on Bazan, but Merceau, Regolo, and Kleber don't have one either, and Kaba does have a hull repair, but starts with 4,100 fewer hit points than Bazan, so in other words, you have to take damage on Kaba and earn it back, whereas with Bazan, you just kind of start with more hit points. I honestly think that Bazan narrowly earns a four here. I could have seen a three for this, this category, but honestly, just having so many hit points and a reasonably low concealment gave her a four in my estimation. Bazan has neither acoustics nor radar, so she earns zero points in each of those categories. Now, like we talked on the last uh, hot take video, ships that have radar and acoustics are just better than other ships. So they get points here and ships that don't have them don't get points here. Uh, typically those sensor ships, the ones with radar and acoustics, they tend to pay for those, those advantages in other ways. So uh, I know some folks might think it's unfair to rate uh, this ship zero points in two categories, um, but hopefully she's making up for it in other places. Uh, plus ships with acoustics and radar are better than ships that don't have them. So they should be rewarded for it. In practice, Bazan's AA feels pretty weak against uh, tier 10 carriers, but honestly, comparing her against her comparables, it's really not all that bad. Uh, she does not get any flak puffs at all because her guns are not dual purpose AA guns, but neither does Regolo or Kleber. Uh, when comparing her AA strength score on shiptool.st, Bazan gets a score of 30. That puts her second among comparable ships and 10th overall out of all 22 tier 10 destroyers. Bazan does have the best short range DPS of all tier 10 destroyers at 313 hit points per second. This does not mean that once a CV has committed to attacking you in your Bazan that you're going to dish up a ton of damage and slay all of their airplanes, but it does mean that you'll probably shoot down a plane or two. Uh, Ragnar is the best AA destroyer with an AA strength of 84, just for a comparison. 30 for Bazan, 84 for Ragnar. And Summers is the worst with an AA strength of 2. All in all, Bazan's AA is pretty average. I mean, when you take a look at the balance of her best in class short range AA versus her lack of flak puffs and her lack of long range AA, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a three in the anti-aircraft guns category. For a gunboat destroyer, Bazan feels kind of slow and she doesn't really handle all that well. Her speed's actually not that bad though. I mean, she does top out at 40 knots, which is the sixth best speed of all tier 10 destroyers. However, because she's a gunboat, I kind of expected a little bit more. I mean, she lags behind Marceau, Kleber, Kaba, Regolo, although Wargaming probably justified this by blessing her with better concealment than any of those ships has. 
To account for the fact that she's a little bit slower, I run Swift in Silence on my Catherine build and I run a coal speed boost module on the ship. Swift in Silence works really well for Bazan because of a relatively low concealment for a gunboat. Just 6.2 kilometers means that Swift in Silence is on more often than it would be for, say, Clabert or another more spottable ship. Her acceleration is pretty decent as this graph indicates, but her rudder shift and turning radius are on the lower end of the spectrum. Certainly not impossible to deal with, but the speed and things could be better. And I always say that I want all of my ships to be faster and have better rudder shift than they have. I'm gonna give Bazan a three out of five for maneuverability because she's not bad, but she's not exceptional in any way, really. The next category I wanna talk about is ease of play. How easy is it to learn how to play Bazan effectively? I don't think Bazan is particularly complicated, and even if you ignored the burst fire, you could learn how to farm battleships and cruisers with this thing pretty quickly. Um, I think in order to get the most out of Bazan, though, you want to lean in to that burst fire, play a few matches, figure out when it's smart to swap back and forth between those two gun modes, and really get the hang of when it is most beneficial to you and when you can use it to improve the chances of your team winning. I think it's really easy to get the hang of Bazan, so I'm going to give her a four out of five for ease of play. Is Bazan fun to play? Um, I think Bazan can be both very boring and very exciting to play, sometimes even in the same match. Um, it's really dangerous, I think, to make this comparison, but go with me for a second. Sometimes Bazan can feel sort of like Paolo Emilio, even though she's nothing like Paolo Emilio, because she can go Nova on a destroyer incredibly suddenly. Now, Bazan provides more consistent, more reliable damage throughout the match than Apollo because the Yolo Emilio requires a narrower set of game conditions to do her crazy trick. The burst fire thing can really change the balance of a fight for a cap that can really throw a DD off guard, and it can be super, super fun to just pop out a smoke and machine gun a destroyer to death. Now, as the World of Warships community gets more and more familiar with Bazan, this might get harder and harder to pull off. People will be like, oh, there's a Bazan in here. Watch your back, everybody. Uh, and in some matches in Bazan, it's not going to be exciting. You're not going to have that opportunity. You're just going to be farming and shattering shells on the turrets of a Kremlin for the entire match, and you'll end up with 26,000 damage. Ask me how I know. Um, your mileage may vary. Uh, I think I'm going to give a Bazan a 3 out of 5, because, yeah, she's kind of fun, I guess. Um, and sometimes she's kind of, yeah. It's a three. It's it's just a three. Bazan gets a three for fun. Uh, would you use the Bazan in competitive modes? Uh, no, not really. I mean, like I said with Hampshire, I think the coordinated play like clan battles and tournament play is going to make it really difficult to get full mileage out of a Bazan. Um, you'd be better off in something like Kleber, Kaba, Smallland, Ragnar, uh, you know, something like that if you wanted to go the full gunboat route. Um, the more reliable DPM, and in some cases the hull repair, things like that make all those ships uh, more powerful than Bazan, I think, in that sort of a, an environment. I'm sure you could get away with Bazan in ranked. The teams are a little less coordinated than they would be in tournament or clan battles play. Um, so, you know, somebody would, would probably be able to pull that off. Uh, but personally, I won't be queuing up to play this thing in anything where steel is on the line. I'm going to give Bazan a 2 out of 5 for competitiveness. Just a quick tour of my build here. Um, I run main battery armaments one, just to make sure everything keeps working. I do run the coal engine boost modification here. This ship is not as fast as I want it to be, and anything I can do to get more speed, I'm gonna do. I am giving up an engine room protection uh, mod here, which you may choose to go with, and I think that'd be a reasonable pick if you weren't gonna spend the coal on the coal module. Uh, I do go with aiming systems modification. In my build, I've got the artillery pushed out to 15.1 kilometers, so I feel like that reduction of dispersion is really helpful. Um, and of course, the, the torpedo tube traverse speed isn't a bad thing to have on there. Um, I go with propulsion modification to enhance my acceleration, uh, which uh, reduces the time it takes my engine power to get to full. And then concealment modification here uh, to lower my ship's detectability. That's part of how we get it down to 6.2 kilometers. I run the main battery modification three here to reduce my reload time by 12%. It does cost me a little bit in traverse speed. Um, and the, the, the turrets do not traverse very quickly, 20.7 seconds in my build, uh, which isn't particularly great. 
As you can see from the consumables, it's just a standard 8% speed boost. We've got a fairly typical smoke here and then a damage control party. If we take a look at my commander build, this is how I've built mine. I'm not sure if this is perfect, but it seems to work as a pretty standard gunboat build. Um, we run this down the side here to do preventative maintenance to keep our modules in, in good shape. We've got last stand so that I'm never unable to maneuver, at least partially. We go with extra hit points from survivability expert, which gives us 350 additional hit points per tier. So a total of 3,500 for this tier 10 ship. And then concealment, that's the other half of the recipe that brings us down to 6.2 kilometers as indicated here for the detectability range by C. We've got uh, adrenaline rush without having a hull repair. This makes a lot of sense to me if I'm half dead, um, I get, what is it, a uh, 10% um, a 10% buff to a reload speeds for my armaments. Uh, Swift and Silence, which helps keep my speed up. Again, with that 6.2 kilometer concealment, that is pretty decent. And so we'll wind up being a little bit faster there when we can. It does have a permanent effect of reducing my main battery reload time, which is uh, 6.1 seconds as configured by me. I also go with the main battery and AA expert here. This increases my main battery range by 20%. Uh, and increases my AA explosions. But remember, we don't have puffs on this ship, so that's actually sort of wasted. Kind of an interesting thing. I could see a build where you don't go with this here, but you do swap out this reload here for main battery firing range to get 16% here, and you don't uh, you don't get quite as much. But I kind of like the reload there. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. That's how I build mine. I'd be interested in how you guys are planning on building yours. One of the challenges that you'll have with Alvaro de Basan is that not very many people, I would wager almost no one, is going to have a 21-point commander for this ship. So if I was doing a 14-point uh, commander, um, I'd probably do preventative maintenance, uh, last stand, survivability expert, and concealment expert for my first 10, and then maybe go with the range here to let me sit off at range and work on uh, uh, keeping the shells going as I'm doing my battleship farming. That's probably a fairly frugal captain build, but um, it would probably get you to where you need to be. Um, other than that, though, that's my build, guys. Hey, thanks a ton for watching this video. I hope that it was entertaining for you. I hope that it was useful. And I hope that uh, you've got some thoughts about whether or not you're interested in adding Alvaro de Basan to your fleet. I'd love to know if you're thinking about getting it or not. And I think as a coal boat goes, she's about coal boat competitive. And I think she is kind of fun, but certainly not going to blow the doors off of some of the other really powerful ships that we've already got in the game. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, tell a friend, share it on your discords or with your clan. That'd be fantastic. And uh, we will see you in the next battle. Until then, take care of each other. Be nice, be cool. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Many of you guys know that I have a particular comparison series that is both quick for you guys to watch and easier for me, for me guys. <laughs> For me guys, for me guys. I found this technique very, very beneficial when I needed to kill a destroyer or at least seriously wound a destroyer. And I wanna start over again because this is terrible. This is my hot take video on Alvaro de Basan. In, uh...